Happy New Year! Year. She needs to commit to it. One, two, three. Happy. <laughs> we missed you guys, Woo, but we're, we're back. back. <laughs> that was not planned. No, it wasn't. 2016, a lot has happened since we saw you last. Star Wars came out. Oh my god. It was amazing. We're uh, obsessed. Gas leak in Los Angeles. It's causing it a state amazing. of emergency. We're gonna die. Ray El Nino is here. I bought a lot of records. And we're here with the most important video that we have to give you right now, which is... Our top 10 list of best albums of 2015. We have them listed, but the numbers aren't set in stone. We love all of the albums almost equally, so it's hard to pick, but... Our top three are carved out. Number 10. Youth Lagoon, Savage Hill Ballroom. Good album. This album, his lyrics are real as... I wasn't into his first two albums. I, I saw him open for The Nationals, my favorite band, and I was not super impressed. I thought it was kind of boring. And his albums, there was like one song on each that I was like, this is cool, but I just couldn't get into them. And this completely broke through for me. It's so honest, and it's just like very like, almost gut-wrenching the way he sings these lyrics and like how like melancholy the whole feel of the album is. Yeah, I feel like he just paused real world and he just observed everything and then he just called everyone's bullshit out in this album. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, this is a lyrics album for sure. And like, it's cool that the melody and like the feel of it matches the lyrics so well. Uh, very impressed. Number nine. Yami XX, uh, no that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie XX in color. We did a video about this earlier in the year. The little unboxing for you. We did. Aside from it's not that good quality. Yeah, the vinyl pressing was very disappointing. A lot of surface noise. A lot of people complained about that, which sucks because it's such an amazing album. It deserves a good pressing. The album in whole was so colorful, so fun. Such a good 2015 record to jam in your life. It's not groundbreaking for electronic music, but it synthesizes a lot of what's popular and makes it fresh, which is cool. I feel like so many people liked it. So many random people that I wouldn't think even listened to this music loved it. Right. Well, they get in through the XX, and they hear about Jamie XX, and he has a solo thing, and they're like, all right, let's check it out. And most of the songs are really catchy and accessible. Even hip-hop fans got their, you know, young thug in there. And, and they grow on you. Yeah, and they all grow on you. It's, it's an impressive album. It has a lot of different sounds and still feels like a uniform album, which is always what I look for. Good Yame work, Jamie. XX. Good work, Yame. Number eight. So we're split on this one. Mine is Courtney Barnett's Sometimes I Sit and Think and Sometimes I Just Sit. And mine is George Clanton, 100% Electronica. I love Courtney Barnett's album so much because I feel like she's my best friend and she's talking to me from her journal. Like, it's just, she just makes music out of random life events and she just like talks about them and you just feel like so cool with her. It's very personable, it's very personal, and I feel like this album got critical acclaim this year for sure. I loved it. It's definitely one of my honorable mentions. It's not in my top ten. I like her two EPs she put out first more, but she's incredibly talented. I've seen her perform live solo, and she's great. George Clanton's 100% Electronica. He is a dude who I just found on Bandcamp, and he makes vaporwave music, which is quickly becoming one of my favorite genres. Vaporwave is kind of like taking sounds and repurposing them in a very like relaxed and chill way people do it with like windows sounds and like kmart audio that plays in the store and it's like very weird <laughs> things you wouldn't expect but it's the most like pretty and relaxing music and it's just one of the more refreshing electronic albums i've heard in a while it's very easy to just put on and do anything to vaporwave is very cool and there's not enough of it around so hopefully there's more number seven destroyer poison season Oh, yeah. I thought it was called Poisonberry. <laughs> no. Damn it, Sandy. First of the year. Destroyer was in The New Pornographers, and he has his own solo query. He has a bunch of albums. I've kind of brushed under the rug. I've heard a couple songs before. Wasn't super into it, but I heard the single, Times Square, on the radio, and I was blown away. I hadn't heard almost anything like it in music in a long time, and it prompted me to listen to the whole album, which happened to be just as good all the way through. I was captivated. It's just like, this. it's almost like the National and the way I like them, how it's very deep voiced and simplistic at times, but it's just very relatable. And I think anyone could appreciate this album from any walk of life. Tell me why I feel like his voice has a hint of Joao and Bob put together. Because it's just like very like whispery. calm. It's like whispery and calm. He has that calm. whisper Bossa Nova-esque feel. I feel like Dan, the singer from Destroyer, should be on Broadway right now with this album in some musical because it's the best, like, I don't know how to explain it, like the best New York album 
it, to make a musical out of. Yeah, it imbues you with so much like emotion while you're listening to it, but you're also very calm. It's there's not much like it to be honest. I love how climactic and big the orchestra music is behind him, and how fragile and like simple his voice is. Number six. Grimes. Art Angels. Dude, she is badass. She is like the baddest chick I've ever met in my life. Well, I've met? never met her. No. I've never seen. Grimes, you know, broke onto the scene. She had a couple albums before, but with her album that came out uh, a couple years ago, Visions, that's where everyone kind of figured out who she was. And it was a, kind of a mysterious sound that not many people had. It was almost, it was almost like a pop record shrouded in fog. But this <laughs> record, I feel like the fog's gone and it's pop which people give her crap for, and they're like, it's a little too poppy. Mm -hmm. It's brilliant experimental pop. Well, I think what you're talking about, the whole, like, fog and the not fog right now, is that I think that with this album, she, like, 100% made it her own. It's almost <laughs> as, like, out there as Bjork without yeah. having that sound. It's not, doesn't sound Definitely. like Bjork, but it's that kind of, like, this is a new sound. I don't really know, and I love it, but I don't know why. Number five. We're split again. Mine's Mac DeMarco, another one. Uh, Damn it, Matt! And mine is... <laughs> Father John Misty's I Love You, Honey Bear. So, Mac DeMarco's album, another one, is just simple, sweet, and solid. Like, a solid folk romantic album that you can just, like, sit down, unwind, and listen to. And it's so surprising how much of a romantic he is. Oh, yeah. He doesn't look like it. No. And he doesn't act like it, but he is. Yeah. And I love it. It's the perfect indie folk album. And he, one of my favorites. So. Yeah, I love that album, too. Definitely one of my honorable mentions as well. Father John Misty, I Love You, Honey Bear. This album has topped a lot of critics' lists as the best album of the year. Um, I love it, obviously. It's my number five. And... Father John Misty was in the Fleet Foxes as the drummer, and then he broke off and made Fear Fun, which was an amazing album, and then he came out with this, which is even better, and he just keeps getting better and keeps getting more famous, as he should be. Yeah. He's a character. He's almost a caricature. He's mm -hmm. all about satire and okay. kind of mocking what society's about, and he does it in his lyrics, but he's also very, very honest, and the songs are not only breathtakingly like orchestral in, in their span, they're also something that if you listen to the lyrics, anybody can agree with and be like, you're right, that is what's happening, or that is weird about society and technology. And he manages to say a lot while making really beautiful music, which is, you know, usually one or the other. I think the theme of all these artists that are making our top ten list is honesty. Mm -hmm. And you can really hear that through the music. Yeah, that's huge to me. I love when it's not something contrived. Four. And three. Together. We're doing that because our four and three are the same, except we flip them. So we figured we'd just talk about both. So my number four is her number three, which is... Kendrick Lamar's To Pimp a Butterfly. And my number four is his number three, which is... Lil Ugly Mane, Oblivion Access. What up, Lil Ugly Mane? So let's just talk about both. Okay, so basically, To Pimp a Butterfly shook up the music industry, shook up the world. This was just such an important album with what yeah. Kendrick had to say with... How he gave so many people a voice. Right. And, you know, he empowered a generation. He empowered a race. It was amazing what he did. I feel like it's one of the landmark albums that we're going to look back at 50 years from now. Yeah. And I love it. I think it's a better album than my number three, but this is a personal list, and I like number three more, which is why I picked it. But front to back, it's innovative. The sound is... Unlike any hip-hop album that came out in recent memory, I can't even think of one that sounds like it. And like I said, he says a lot. He says a lot of things that, you know, after repeat listens, you really are able to metabolize whether you can relate to them or not. Something we didn't touch on in our review of this album when we first did a first impression was that the last track, Mortal Man, the fact that he... he no one's ever done this before. He splices Tupac with himself making a fake interview about the state of society, and it's unbelievable. Like, I've never heard of that happening in music so so seamlessly and I commend him for doing something so so bold and having it pay off. Then there's my boy Lil Ugly Mane. Let me just start by saying when I was introduced to Lil Ugly Mane, I did not like him. Like at all. Every time Matt told me to listen to him, I was like, ugh. And his album, Oblivion Access, made my top ten list. Like this is how good it is. And it introduced me to him and now I love all of Lil Ugly Mane stuff and I'm just like 
so excited and I want everyone to know about him. Oblivion Access is his final album in theory. I feel like he'll do more in the future, but As Little Ugly Man supposedly his last and it's a really fitting bookend to his career. He has a lot of really good tracks. He has a couple albums. Mr. Thug Isolation, we did a, a whole video about me and Vahe. And that album is kind of like a club banger album with like really funny, fun lyrics and great beats. Not this is this not one. that. This is a dark journey through his mind. Like Blood wrenching. The, like the deepest recesses of his mind, but he manages to make it so fun and intriguing to listen to that I can't stop. I've listened to it almost every day since it came out. It's so interesting because it's so weird. And every time you listen to it, you hear something new that you didn't. And it's just a, such a trip. He speaks on society as well. Not in the way that Kendrick does. He pokes holes in a lot of things that we take for granted. And he brings light to things that we don't like to talk about or think about. He treats it like something that we need to understand. To understand the world around us more. But we tend to push Not. under the rug. Yeah. This album is a masterpiece as well, in a different way than Timber Butterfly is. But I love it. It's one of my favorite hip-hop albums of all time already, and it just came out this year. Number two. Elvi, Return to the Moon. I was going to say to Pimp Butterfly. Damn it, Sandy. Come on. It's your number two of the year. Oh, my God. I saw them live at a tiny venue. It was mind-blowing. It was one of the coolest shows I've ever seen. I got this awesome Blade Runner-inspired poster. Brent signed it for me on the bottom. My whole life was made. What more do you want from an album when it already has Matt Berninger's voice in it? It's like, hello, it's already top right there. Mm -hmm. And then his lyrics. And the more you listen to this album, the more you like it, the more you fall in love with like the random things he says, and the more you make stories up in your head for it. That's why I fell in love with this album. I literally listen to it every single day for about a month. It is very cinematic. It could be a movie. It should be a movie. Mm -hmm. It's front to back something that you're unable to put down. It's not an album that it's easy to like stop listening for any reason. You have mm -hmm. to kind of give it a full listen through because it's that charming. There's not a lot of stuff that sounds like it either. It's a very unique sounding album. It's very dark at times. It's very heavy, almost like Joy Division at times. But then it can be very light, like Return to the Moon. Yeah, and then there's also some fun, goofy tracks on there to kind of break up the tension. This is an album I will listen to for the rest of my life. It's it's super important, and I feel like if you haven't listened to it by now, please do. Number one. I bet you no one can guess what this is. <laughs> not, a, not a single nope. viewer has any idea what we, we're about to say. We actually have never talked about it. <laughs> it is Sufjan Stevens' Carrie and Lowell. And this is my redemption, because I won't cry. I might cry. <laughs> We saw this tour twice, even though the tickets were very, very expensive. I almost don't want to even talk about it in length because there's not a lot I can say besides the fact that in my life, listening to music, I've never had the reaction to an album that I did to this. The sheer amount of emotion I felt the first time I heard it, I did cry. It's... I feel like I'm about to cry right now. Me Just too. About it. This is so stupid. Uh, <laughs> he literally opens up his most personal diary and just serenades you for a full album with these intense memories of his life and the way he plays the music is so unbelievably Power. powerful and just beautiful it's it's one of those beautiful folk albums i've ever heard and i love folk music it's just She's just crying. like matt said i'm not crying <laughs> it's so stupid okay <laughs> I just feel like lyrics have never moved me so much no. as these lyrics have. And I feel like we've gotten so much crap by saying that music does change you and like whatever. But this really did change me and this really did help me become a better person. So thanks, Sufjan. Yeah, Sufjan's had a long career and this honestly, all his albums are amazing to me, but this is his best and I, I ask anyone to top this in terms of quality in the future. I, I, I hope there's a better album I hear in my life. <laughs> so let's just not talk about it and let you listen to it so you can experience Sufjan and its magical glory. Here are our honorable mentions. Let's go. Two thousand fifteen had a lot of good music. Two thousand sixteen is very promising too. We have Frank Ocean to look forward to, Kanye West, Radiohead. It's gonna be a big year, so let's see what they have in store. Well, welcome 2016. We're ready for you. And we have some good stuff for you, too, on Damn It, Sandy. We have a lot of cool stuff planned, so stick with us. Subscribe. Social Share. media. Share. 
help us grow in 2016. I'm Matt. And I'm Sandy. And this is Damn It Sandy. What up? What up?